What's going on, everybody? My name is Riz, and you are here live at the Rockstar Podcast. Hello. What, can I help you? What was I, that? I'm just enjoying my Monster What, what was drink. that? Are you going to introduce yourself? You need me to do that. Monster Energy Drink? It's All right. my favorite drink. Let me reintroduce himself. His name is Encore. Do you want more? That's definitely going to be my intro song, right? Yeah, 100%. It has For to sure. be. What are we talking about today, Riz? What are we talking about? Well, I actually thought we were going to get pedicures today. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, Encore, let's go get our toesies done. He's like, yeah, yeah, come on down. Don't worry. There's so many spots. By the way, here's two mics and two cameras. Let's just record real quick. Every chance we get. We yeah, every get chance we get. Today. And um, now I see the sun going down. <laughs> I don't think I want to get my toesies done. So that's that's on you, Encore. Priorities. Uh, what are we talking about today? We are talking about all the different things we've done. In, all of them? No, no, no. In just 2023 alone. Oh, know. okay. Where yeah. are we with 2023? Um, I want to hear your side. I'm going to explain my side. Uh, a lot of my businesses um, I haven't really added on, but I've expanded. So I think I'm going to need to change the narrative a bit. Okay. And... Uh, explain the message a little better so on this podcast maybe you could help me create my messaging a little better to the audience so people don't get confused because i'm confused i'm pretty good at that we can figure this out sounds good so what you been up to encore so uh i mean let's talk about the studio right yeah this is just open in 2023 yep. it uh is going to be a three room uh podcast solution for anyone that wants to shoot a show here in new jersey yep we're in Springfield, New Jersey, which is like the intersection of three different counties, so it's kind of exciting. Awesome. And of the three rooms, one is open. That's the one that we're using today. Yep. There's two more rooms that are going to be open this summer. Nice. And I'm super stoked about them because I, I designed the space like myself. Every inch of that space is customized. And uh, Ever since I've known you, you've kind of designed all your office spaces yourself, right? Yeah. Okay. Even my outfits, the infamous purple jacket. I thought it was blue. I don't start this again. <laughs> well, was it my car that this started? Where you, purple you, car. You were telling my car was purple, but it really was silver. <sighs> Those years were tough. Um, At least, you know, I'm consistent. So the podcast studio, I think, is dope. I, I just feel like there's all these local vendors that don't know how to, like, catch up to everyone else on social media. And this is one of those, like, easy ways to get in front of the camera, start getting vertical content. And my, my goal is to get... 500 shows recorded here in the studio in New Jersey. So I understand the benefits of a podcast, obviously, right? Yeah. You and I are in the social media world. We just know that's the next evolution. You right. got a podcast out. You're going to get subscribers from all over and a usage base that you can in any other medium. But what made you even think like, hey, I'm going to benefit financially. I'm going to turn this into a business. What was the turning point for you? Well, most people don't know this, but... After I left Shreds, I decided to start my own agency again, and getting office space was an issue. But WeWork was everywhere. Mm. And I mean, there's literally, I don't know, 40 some WeWorks in New York City. Mm -hmm. I was living in Jersey City, so how about train, get private, private office space, um, and you know, leave your, your equipment there and everything, and there's no issues. Every time I would turn on a camera, a member of their staff would like run over and be like, you're not allowed to, to record here. Oh, wow. And so okay. it's actually a policy in the WeWork lease that you cannot record on premises. Mm, okay. So when you have such a beautiful space like that and you can't shoot a podcast or shoot your own what's content. What's the purpose what, of what's the having point? I totally understand. So, I mean, you have industrious, you have round table, you have a handful of different like shared work spaces here in New Jersey that are popping up. And content is something that everyone should be creating. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show everyone a solution to how to get it done at an affordable rate. What's wild to me is that in New Jersey, this doesn't exist at all. There's, there's one spot up in Hoboken, and there's one spot out in uh, Perth Amboy that you can go get some of this stuff done. Mm -hmm. But it's by like sound engineers in like a production room where like people normally record violinists and, and whatnot. It's right. not set up for podcasts. Got it. In the city, there's a bunch of this stuff in Brooklyn and Queens. But who from Jersey is going to drive out all the way over there? Yeah, I understood. So, I mean, it's it's a pretty expensive venture. That's why it's it's a lot of man hours, um, a lot of labor intensive. It takes up a lot of retail space. So the it's equipment, just some, maintenance. It, yeah, um, editing, right? So just for you to go into this business, you must have seen a lucrative opportunity or a demand for it. 
because anyone that's going to get a podcast from you, they're going to spend quite a few hundred dollars per episode. So you see, you said 500 recordings? 500 shows. 500 shows. That's multiple right. recordings because a show has minimum two to four shows, two well, to uh, episodes. Well, I'm trying to educate everyone that I, in contract, will guarantee 10,000 listeners if they do 10 episodes with me. Okay. And that's with me producing the show, me distributing the show, and doing the, everything that I do. It's a reasonable. Obviously, right? you and I have done this. A track just, record, right? Yeah. Proven track record yeah. that it works. I think what most people fail to understand about a business, and I know you get this completely, right, is when you get a client, you kind of have to partner with them. You have to show them the ropes. You have to show them why you're going to do what you're going to do. You have to show them how there's ROI right. in, in what they're spending. Yeah. You know, if, even if it was catering, if it was a TikTok studio, whatever, yeah. right? Having unique TikTok content, I'm sure, is well worth whatever rate you're charging because it's right. differentiating them from everyone else out there. The right. Well, I will, yeah, I didn't get into it yet. So, yes, I have launched a TikTok studio. We're calling it Tribe Studios. as a C. Boom, boom, boom. Um, I feel like that logo haunts me. <laughs> I've been seeing it since I was 13. Yeah, yeah. So this is the whole name comes from the original Tribe DJs, which turned it to Tribe Promotions, which was Tribe Wait a second. Let, let me see the E. Is it the right E? Oh, here we go. Here it's we go. the right E. <laughs> you know how that uppercase, lowercase nonsense? Yeah, makes yeah. a difference. Correct. Garga. Not everybody knows. Uh, but yeah, so um, DJ service, it was Tribe DJs. Then we went Tribe um, International. Then we had Tribe Family. Right, which was a merger of five different promotional companies across New Jersey alone. Uh, and then we did like Tarkin, Tamasha, it's still all. Oh, we're going throwback names. Okay. Throwback. I'm just giving the history of Tribe. And um, then I launched Tribe Visions around Fire and Ice Times, where we just started doing photography. That was probably my first. Oh, Parth. Yeah, yeah, Parth. yeah. Parth. Yeah. A few I remember people. that yeah. guy. I created a company just for photography, Tribe Visions which uh, eventually converted into ngpartypictures.com, which did very well. But then the era of Facebook came and destroyed all the party websites, right? They had free galleries. Um, and then maybe five years after that, after Shred's time, I opened up the Tribe Marketing Facility right in Somerset, New Jersey. After that, just from having a marketing company, you know, just being relevant, you have to be on social media, you have to learn how to do paid advertisement, and you have to learn how to shoot content. So shooting, shooting, shooting for people, especially in New Jersey, when the weather's bad, I just started renting space for my own content. And then I had the opportunity at the tribe marketing office to take on the office next door, and I just took it. And boom, long and behold, tribe um, studios was born. Now, I wanted Tribe Studios to be a little different because obviously you have a flex, flex workspace over here in Springfield, and I have Tribe Studios in Somerset, right next to Rutgers University. What was going to be the difference? The fact that you stuck to the podcast, I want to be a little different. I was like, I'm going to do TikTok. TikTok is big. Uh, so I'm creating a selfie studio, which was unique. Wait a second. A selfie studio. Yep, that's what it is. So you're not providing your own cameras? No, not at all. Explain. So, one, not everyone has a budget for a $500, $600, $1,000 shoot, right? So I create a scenario where the lighting is perfect. You have multiple different backdrops, multiple different sceneries. And for an affordable price of $25 an hour, you could come and use your camera phone. We provide you the ring lights, and you could just take pictures, as many pictures as you want. You could do... Um, pre-maternity shoots, you could do pre-wedding shoots, you could do a birthday shoot, you could do an event shoot, or hey, if you're a photographer, you could come and rent the whole space if you want to have multiple different looks, because that's what I needed. Oh, so it's a room with like a bunch of different backgrounds that people can kind of choose the angles, and you provide some dope lighting, because everyone knows a ring light's like magic. Yeah. Right? It changes everything. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's like Color Factory, except the intention is every area you can take a selfie. And same thing as you. There's nothing like this in New Jersey. Right, right. right? So I saw that it is a demand across the country, but they didn't have it in New Jersey. They had one in Paramus, New Jersey, but it shut down. Oh, Yeah, okay. it was in the mall. So, of course, mall leases are expensive, and the malls are dead these days. So right. why are you going to spend so much money there? So my facility is just as large, and it's a lot more intimate. It's boutique, Right. Whereas it's not a gigantic corporation, it's me. 
if you want to change something around, no problem. If you are a photographer and you left your light at home or you need batteries, whatever the case, I got you. That's not a problem at all. Yeah, DJ 911. <laughs> Riz is always the guy that solves whatever missing wire adapter, so on and so forth. Yeah. So, I mean, I enjoy it. I love it. And also, you know, I'm a marketer, so I shoot, you know, in the eyes of a business owner. You know, what does a business need? What do you need to shoot to drive sales, traffic, or leads? So I could always help everyone. And I also have my own toys, right? For me, I consider this as my playground. So I keep on buying different accessories that I personally need, and I'm glad to share with anybody. So I feel like that is the stand standout point for me, that we are a selfie studio. Anyone without a photography background can come in at an affordable price. And anyone that is a photographer and is always running around, they'll have a controlled environment where they have a private shoot and have multiple different landscapes there. You know, what was interesting for me was leaving corporate America in this past year and jumpstarting my agency, hmm. which is a different aspect of what I'm doing. Going back into marketing, helping people with their websites, social media, full scale revenue, like growth models for, for small to large scale businesses. Yeah. It, it was shocking to me how cutthroat the industry has gotten and how quick people in New Jersey, especially vendors, are to like just like talk so down about a competitor in the space. Do you feel like you don't get vendor support in New Jersey? Not at all. Really? Yeah. And okay. it blows my mind. Like, even people that I'm close with that have their own agencies mm -hmm. and me reaching out, they're just like, oh, Ankur's a threat. He's entering our space now. I'm like, sorry, but I've been in your space. I just have been very selective with clients for a long time. And now is the first time in 10 years that I'm opening my doors that mm. if anyone needs help, I'll help them out with whatever they need. But... The reality is, like, I'm not here to try to take food off someone's plate. There's yeah. so much business that's out there for There's everyone. Plenty. I mean, look at you. You and I, we do the same exact things. Literally. We don't compete at all. We support one another. When someone needs something, I send them to you. In fact, I tell most of my clients, go to Ankur. He's better than me. You know, even though we all know that's a lie, you know, no, I, I truly do. Like, I, I send them over. Like, you know, Ankur's much better than me in this angle. That's the truth. No matter what, even if you're in the same field same business if you're in the banking field you name it tv field production field photography each you know house has their own specialty you have particular things that you're good at, good at i have certain things that i'm good at and we just support each other back and forth and how much business can one take right so if i'm busy i'll give it to you you know i, I think the way that we are about this is so genuine and it's just awesome. Honestly, I hated the idea of wanting to do the studio and go small business. You've been pushing me in this direction for so long. Yeah. <clears throat> that once you build a book of clients and you have an opportunity here to get like consistent revenue, I'm able to help create more jobs for the local community. I'm able to help specific businesses that I believe in their mission, like people that are actually making a difference in the yeah. community. But I knew that this uphill uh, battle or uphill journey that I was about to start was, was going to be tough. Right. I just didn't realize how many Jersey vendors don't support each other. But as I'm meeting one vendor after the next and showing them how genuine I am about helping their business, giving them the podcast space for free, even yep. if they need it, right? If they, they don't believe in the business, come on down. I'll show you how this works. We'll do a couple free episodes. I'll put you on my show. I post that episode. They all of a sudden get 100, 200 new followers, give them vertical content, and it blows their mind that there's people out there that actually care. Yeah. They're willing to help them. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a creator. I tell everyone this. I'm not a business owner. You know, I'm an artist. And being in a podcast, a video podcast, you are able to express yourself in different ways. You know, not only is it artistic, you know, you're not going back and forth on the style of how the podcast should be, what it should look, the messaging, but also it's another platform. I mean, how beautiful is that? If you're a painter, you know, you're not just going to be able to paint on just a particular type of canvas. You could paint anywhere, right? right? And since we're both creators, this is just the latest platform to paint on. But at the same time, I can tell you what I'm doing with my life. And you as a client or potential client or just as a friend can either reshare this. You know, you could tell me what's good, what you like, what you don't like. Um, you can give advice. This is, you know, the wild, wild west right now. No one knows what to do with these podcasts. And uh, lastly, a business that might be on the fence between your company and another company. Now we have a competitive edge. And I think that's the number one thing about the podcast. Do the podcast. 
it doesn't hurt you not to do a podcast. If you're Facts. a business, it doesn't matter what field in it. You don't have to be a creative. You could be in construction, right? You could be in clothing. You could be in fashion. You could be, you know, a news reporter. You could be a mother. You name it. Do a podcast. Tell them your story because I promise you, out of the six, seven billion people in the world, there's a huge percentage that will listen to you. And your advice, your experiences, your hardships, your solutions will help someone out there. So, Rich, you're going to make me cry, man. <laughs> if it's not so for sweet. yourself, then do it for someone else. So I feel like you and I have, without putting a name to it, kind of created a family of vendors and a family of clients that once they're under our umbrella, I mean, you and I will pass people back and forth. There's certain things that you do better. There's certain things that I do better. There's certain vendors like photographers, uh, website guys, I mean, you name it, right? And we all pass people internally around to what's yeah. going to be the best fit at yeah. that given moment. I think the local vendors that are secretly watching all of our stuff, thinking that we're threats, just need to understand that we're here to help. And we're, to, uh, we're here to rise everyone up or take everyone up with us or whatever the right yeah, phrase I, is. I hope no one thinks that way. I, I generally don't think anyone does. Um, whenever Negatively about us. Oh, dude, so many people. Not aware. We're a threat. Not aware at all. I, I don't have that same experience with really? the vendors as you. I have a total different outlook on it. I might be naive. You know, maybe someone is talking <laughs> behind my back. I have no clue. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. I just don't have time to listen to it because mm. I'm nothing but positive things to say about you. Or you know what? I'm not even talking to you. If you don't add any positivity to my life, and that's not about my bottom line. If you do not add positivity to my life, then you're adding negativity. And I just don't want that. Can't afford it. I can't handle it. I don't want it. I'm seeing a therapist right now. Can't handle all that stuff, okay? Am I the therapist? Is this therapy? <laughs> no. <laughs> but what, what, like this, what I'm trying to say is I, I, anyone who's listening, I want them to know that they're welcome to join our little family of vendors. And you know, if you're a real estate agent and you're looking to grow your business, c come join us. We're going to show you how you can get access to our community, our following, our review centers and, and you know hell I, I, i'm gonna need a home soon or i'm getting married you should come join the family and figure out how we're gonna help grow each other yeah i mean you, you know what's really cool will be unique and i don't think this has been done anywhere in the history of business or marketing what we can do is we can take on a client and we can both manage that client it could be two companies marketing for one client and they get two products pretty much right it's it's That's amazing why wouldn't everyone want to do that, to have the opportunity to have multiple people? If we stop looking at each other as a competition and threat and look at each other as help and you know building blocks, we could all increase at double the speed. That's the goal, man. And I hope Jersey vendors realize that we're here to do exactly that. So this is a call, okay? Not a call to arms, but um, this is a call for a hug. Let's all get together and um, let's work together and let's see what we can do. And if you are a vendor and you feel like your services helps me or Anchor out, reach out, we'll pay you. We don't want it for free, we will pay you. And vice versa, come through and support us. None of us are gonna go broke by just giving each other money back and forth, but it goes a long way. Absolutely. So. And for anyone who doesn't know how to reach us, all that information is below in the description of the video. Uh, in my video. In my video. No, in my video. My video. I'm just kidding. Call me. Don't call him. Call, call him. Don't call me. <laughs> and that's how it should be. All right. Bye, guys.